Now we're trying to win games here right now. I'm excited, to say the least. Baseball is back. Minor League Baseball back in North Alabama. A seven-year wait put to an end as another chapter in America's pastime begins. 7,500 fans filing into Toyota Field here in Madison. The sold-out crowd ready to cheer on the new home team for the first time. The Rocket City Trash Pandas hoping to start off their first ever home stand with a win against the Tennessee Smokies. The Trash Pandas enter this one with a 2-4 and four record, looking to turn things around after a series loss in Chattanooga. Welcome to Toyota Field. I'm Lyndon Blake alongside Max Cohan. We're about to have a baseball game, a Trash Pandas baseball game, finally in Toyota Field. Max, we've been taking it in all afternoon as the fans have started to come in North Alabama, finally get what they've wanted for years, their baseball team back. Everybody's excited. You saw the lines behind the gates when people were waiting for that five o'clock gate opening. You could see the lines outside the parking lot right now. Cars backed up as far as the eye can see. People have been waiting for this. They really have. And now that the moment's here, the excitement, you can feel it. Everybody's ready for some baseball. Now it wasn't hard to get the excitement back about baseball in North Alabama, but it sure was hard to get the team back. By far the best market for minor league baseball in the United States that did not have a team is this market right here. Seeing an opportunity and taking it. That's exactly what Ball Corps CEO Ralph Nelson did. On November 7, 2017, Nelson announced Major League Baseball approved the sale of the Mobile Bay Bears. Just two days later, the sale was finalized. The ball now rolling for minor league baseball's return to North Alabama after months of meetings and encouragement from residents. If we can make hockey work in Alabama, then we should be able to make <laughs> baseball work in Madison. The city of Madison and Balcourt reached an agreement to relocate the team. That agreement included a new $46 million ballpark with the team now on its way and North Alabama's newest addition in the works, excitement grew across the region. People lined up for their chance to snag season tickets nearly a year and a half before the scheduled home opener of that inaugural 2020 season. The team now had a name, logo, and merchandise. But then life through the team, fans, and the world, a curveball. Major League Baseball has informed Minor League Baseball that it will not be providing its affiliated minor league teams with players for the 2020 season. As a result, there will not be a minor league baseball season in 2020. The coronavirus pandemic knocked the team down, but not out. We figured out ways to use this ballpark. We did events, we did fundraisers, we did things for charity. I mean, we did everything, Christmas light shows. Through the efforts of the staff, continued support from fans and health experts making it possible to attend a baseball game again, the Trash Pandas survived. Fast forward more than a year after the Trash Pandas were supposed to take the field for the first time, and here we are. The gates to Toyota Field are open, the players are warming up, and fans are ready to cheer on their new team. Now, while this is about as normal as I felt in some time out here at a baseball game, as you can see, masks are still on our face. Things aren't quite as normal as they used to be, Max. Right. There are some precautions you guys need to know about if you're planning on coming to a game this year. Obviously, the masks are one of the biggest ones. Those are required when you're walking around the park and doing anything other than eating or drinking. Also, all tickets for parking and the games are digital. Additionally, there's a clear bag policy. That's to reduce contact. And Toyota Field is also completely cashless with credit and debits for the team's cash card. Excuse me. Credit and debit can be used anywhere. And if you don't carry a card normally, you can use the trash cash card for concessions and merchandise. So one of the things you might be buying is merchandise, maybe a logo. Obviously, that's a pretty popular thing with this team. I didn't have to use my trash cash tonight because I finally got to bring my hat that I've had for two years, Max. This is way before I even knew who you were. I've been holding on to this. Was originally going to wear it to that April 15th, 2020 game. But hey, it still feels good on May 11th, 2021. Absolutely. Well, the Trash Pandas are more than just a team. They're North Alabama's team. They're your 
sport team, and this logo is a big part of that. Four words. In Rocket City. Trash pandas. Rocket City. Trash pandas. Spreading across the state, country, and the world. I saw a guy take a picture with a trash panda shirt on in front of the Eiffel Tower. Before the pandemonium began, the trash pandas were just an idea. In fact, a collection of ideas from all over. The name I selected was the uh, Alabama Rocketeer. Um, Madison Margaritas. Mine is Huntsville Hornet. I went with the Madison Moonrakers. North Alabama's new minor league baseball team needed help, and fans answered the call. Through a naming contest, we got a top 10, then a top 5, before finally... And with the help of a company named Brandios, we also got a logo. I think the logo is interesting because it incorporates a lot of history in, in Huntsville. I don't think too many people know what Rocket City is. Maybe this logo will help that. A new team, name, and logo wasn't enough for the Trash Pandas. As with anything in the Rocket City, even the sky isn't the limit. The Trash Pandas made history in their own way. We're the only team in minor league that requires international shipping. And that's over 120 teams. We're the only ones that ship to you know, places like Australia, ever, uh, Ireland, France. Trash Panda Nation has is, is gone worldwide. You know, I've got, I know for a fact that uh, we've got logoed gear in, in Australia. So I, as far away from us as we can get. $4 million in merchandise later, boxes of gear ready to be shipped all over the world pile high in the team's store. So what is it that makes people buy? For Trash Panda's promotion manager and the runner-up of the Name the Team contest, the answer is simple. I think it's something about the logo. You know, it's a fashion thing, and I think somehow we uh, started this off as becoming a minor league baseball team, but we've also made a fashion statement in the process. Fans won't be the only ones rocking the new logo. Yeah, I actually saw uh, Rocket City pa Trash Pandas before I even got drafted, and I thought it was a very cool name. I thought it was unique. While the team is trying to put its name on the map by winning on the field, the Trash Pandas organization already put itself on the world map. So one of the things that's obvious about this team is that the name, the logo, they just stand out. Even if you don't know the players on the field, you probably know the team by now because it's just such a distinct logo and name. The combo is unbeatable. And I've noticed over just the past week since the players have been in town, you get even more attached to the logo, to the team, because you now finally have people to root for out there. But how can you not rock the logo? Pretty much everyone here has on their Trash Pandas merch. Absolutely. And as you guys know, we didn't get to see that logo on the field as early as we had hoped. They Our first game was scheduled for last Tuesday in Chattanooga. Mother Nature decided to disrupt that just a little bit. We're now joined by Way 31 Chief Meteorologist Kate McKenna. She's at the gates. Kate, we're about 30 minutes away from first pitch. How are things looking for tonight? Well, got a lot of cloud cover in place, but the weather continues to hold out here at Toyota Field. Temperatures just a little bit chilly. I'm starting to see that the folks that are rolling in right now are in sweatshirts and they're bringing their jackets if they're not. We're at 67 degrees currently. It's mostly cloudy. And as far as temperatures go throughout the rest of this evening, it is going to be on the cooler side. I do want to uh, kind of give you an idea of what to expect here as we go throughout the rest of this evening. But across the Way 31 Storm Tracker early warning radar network, it has been a quiet picture. You may notice that the graphics are kind of doing some strange things right now, but I do want to let you know that the best news so far, the last time I checked the Way 31 Storm Tracker early warning radar network, the showers were continuing to dissipate. So as we go through this evening, we'll be keeping a very close watch on it, but for the time being, it's going to be a pretty touch and go later this evening. And the next couple of hours look pretty good. In fact, as I take you through here, you'll see that uh, right around Toyota Field, around our Decatur radar site, that's a quiet picture so we'll continue to monitor that for you minute by minute coming up. Kate, obviously North Alabama is no stranger to severe weather or rain and we know you can't predict the future but if you had to ballpark it any estimate as to how many games might get delayed or postponed this season? And of course uh, you know we get our fair share of rain here in North Alabama so uh, Typical minor league season runs from, let's say, April to Labor Day, and that's about 160 days for that entire season. Of course, our season's starting a little bit later because of the coronavirus pandemic. But uh, average number of rainy days per season, 
50.7. That's just thereabouts any time that we've actually received rain on any of those days in that 160 day time period in Huntsville. That's the area that we're looking at for statistics. So take 50.7 days, divide that by 160. That gives us about 31.7, that percentage of rainy days. And the number of home games, well, it's a 60 game. So when you do the math, what is 31.7% of 60 games? Turns out that about 19 out of 60 games will have the potential to be rained out. But the important thing to remember is that that's rain at any time of day during that 160 day time period. So it's a little more optimistic than what maybe the statistics show. But again, just another testament to how much rain we actually do get here in Huntsville and in Madison as well. Thanks, Kate. The clock is ticking down until first pitch here at Toyota Field. In just a few minutes, we'll take a look back at the history of minor league baseball in the Rocket City and how this team is paving the way for the future. Yeah, we're just rearranging wires. How much time do I have? And I have Pat Fincher, I have his kids, Mark, Donna, and Lori. And uh, four generations are standing right behind me. Donna played 13 years in okay. baseball, uh, two of which were with the Angels. So when's the first break? We're in the break. Uh, we're in the break. We're in the break. We're in the break. We're in the break. Yeah. Do you need Bump that? In. When's okay. your eating thing? It's in the tag. Suzanne's trying to get the. Two minutes to be walked. Could you run down Suzanne? I think she's good. I mean, she's. She can I'm hanging out in section 15. You can see picnic tables all around me. It's not what you would normally see at a minor league ballpark, but the trash pandas wanted this to be a state-of-the-art facility, and it almost stayed just that, art on a drawing board. From this to this, a new ballpark was key in bringing minor league baseball back to North Alabama. I'm a baseball fan, so I'm just going to say it. If you build it, they will come.
The famous Field of Dreams line came true for the Trash Pandas. The stadium was built, the baseball team came, and so did the fans. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Paying the 40, 46 million sounds all good up there, but there's so much detail that you don't have yet. And yet you're in a hurry to pass this one thing. In the end, the Madison City Council and Balfour came to an agreement, literally laying the foundation for the region's newest big project. A big name already in the works. Welcome to Toyota Field. Toyota called us more than three months before we even had a deal with the city of Madison and said, if you get this done, we really want to work with you. And so, so that's what we did. Through social media and a drive on 565, fans were able to see what was once just a design come to life. Uh, you know, just a few years ago, this was just a wide open field of coyotes. I mean, you know, we've seen coyotes walk, you know, leave here all the time. So it was their home at one point. So there was, uh, you know, there was nothing here before and people are finding out how to get here. Fans aren't the only ones enjoying the new complex. The players taking the field, the same ones who spent their entire lives on a diamond, say this one ranks as one of the best. I mean, look around, it's a state-of-the-art facility, you know, like our locker rooms to the field, to the playing surface, to the mounds, everything is just done so well. Oh, it's unbelievable. The newer ballparks and the miners now are just, they're getting nicer and nicer. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, this facility is unreal. Um, it's first class. Um, the facilities downstairs are amazing. The playing surface is crazy. Um, and yeah, I'm just ready to see this place packed. Development coach Garrett Lloyd. Now they did not Athletic mention the food because Logan I don't Summerson think this dumpster wrap is on Jay Bell's nutrition plan for the trash pandas. But this is one of my favorite things to eat in the ballpark. It's loaded with hot and dogs, first, fries, third, all in a cheese two, quesadilla. Now this Short. is not something you would eat like number on your five, first date. So instead Roberts. of me eating this on camera, 16, I'm going to toss it back Eric over to Max so I can enjoy a little bit of number this. Max over Matt here. Swimmer. Thanks, Landon. Now, whether or not you're planning to come to tonight's game or just watch from the comfort of your own catch, there might be some rules you might not recognize. One of the most notable is that minor league baseball is testing a rule in double A that all four infielders must have their cleats on the infield dirt for each pitch. That will limit how much teams can shift their defense for certain batters. Now, none of these rules existed the last time minor league baseball was played in North Alabama. That was 2014 as a home team, and then there were a few games played in 2015. But let's take a look back at the history that got us to where we are right now. The end of an era, September 1st, 2014. After spending 30 years in the Rocket City, the Huntsville Stars played their final game at Joe Davis Stadium. The franchise was sold to a group of investors who moved the team to Mississippi. But because of delays to their new ballpark, the Shuckers played their first 54 games on the road, including 15 at Joe Davis Stadium. The Stars are a piece of Huntsville and MLB history, brewing the likes of Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, and Nelson Cruz, just to name a few. After what's technically a seven-year gap of baseball in North Alabama, the Trash Pandas are now ready to pick up where the Stars left off. I hear lots of stories from you know the the local the local families of, of how they went to stars came, you know games as as a kid and now they're the parents bringing their their uh, families to you know their kids to the game and I think that's uh, that's pretty cool that uh, we get to start a whole new generation of baseball fans of uh, Rocket City Trash Panda fans. The team is even paying tribute to the stars with a concession stand, All Stars. The Trash Pandas aren't looking to erase old memories, but instead make new ones, even as fans look back. Parents and the kids can reminisce, I guess, back and forth about, hey, this is what it was like when we were at Joe Davis, and this is what it's like here. And we just talk about having baseball back here. I think it's, uh, it brings families together of all ages, and uh, it's just going to be a great place for, for everybody to, uh, to start making memories again. While the recent history may be dark for Joe Davis Stadium, the future is bright. Construction is underway there as part of an $8 million renovation to turn it into a multi-sport complex. Taking good old Joe Davis Stadium that was in pretty rough shape, we put a little money into it, and it's been reconverted so that it can be used for high school football games. For the Trash Pandas, it's simple. Learn from the past to make a better future. We have the plans in place uh, with the city of Madison to make sure that we keep this ballpark up to date. If it's the newest shiny thing, hopefully we're the ones that can uh, we can continue to build that. 
Creating a fun and winning culture, that's just part of the Trash Panda's job. Next, we'll tell you how the team already hit a home run with their main responsibility. Welcome back to Toyota Field, where you can just feel the excitement starting to reach its peak as the first pitch of the Trash Pandas home opener is minutes away. And Lyndon, as you said, these players, they have big goals, they have big dreams. This is a pit stop, but they have MLB aspirations. I mean, we love North Alabama, but the players know there's no professional baseball team here that's in the MLB. So their goal is to move on. One Trash Panda player already has, and the others want to do the same. It's been 20 years since Jay Bell crossed home plate to secure the Arizona Diamondbacks' first and only World Series title. After retiring in 2003, Bell coached in the major and minor leagues, including a stint as hitting coach for the Mobile Bay Bears. Now he's leading the Trash Pandas in their inaugural campaign. While his focus is on winning each and every game, Bell also knows his real goal repping his players for the next level. My objective is just to move everybody, try and get them on their way as quickly as possible. For one player, that dream became a reality. 
Tory Hunter Jr. never got the chance to play for the Trash Pandas. The outfielder was promoted to the Angels AAA affiliate, the Salt Lake Bees, before the team's second game of the season, even during his short time in the Rocket City. Hunter says Bell's experience will help him make his own mark on the game. He had a very successful career, uh, and he knows what he's talking about. So to have somebody uh, like him as a resource, as your manager, uh, he's always uh, open to giving stories, sharing stories uh, just about his plan days and things that he's learned, you know, funny stories here and there just to kind of lighten the mood. So he's he's done a really good job as a manager. As for other players waiting for their names to be called to get a step closer to the show, they're excited to have a baseball lifer leading the way. Yeah, having a uh, Jay as our manager, it's it's very helpful. Um, he knows what he's doing. He's been in the game for a long time. His experience and what he brings to this field every day and being our manager from different perspectives, you know, it's it's really, really cool getting to play for a guy that has that much service time and that has that much experience just with the game, you know. It's really, really cool. Way 31 is the official home of the Rocket City Trash Pandas. We're broadcasting all home games live from Toyota Field on Way 31's newest channel, This TV, now available on channel 31.6. Through this partnership, the Trash Pandas now have the most expansive television coverage in all of minor league baseball. So go ahead and flip on over to 31.6, that first pitch coming up at 635. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Way 31.